Here's a riddle for you. What flies around the world 14 times a day and can detect global air pollution levels from space? It's NASA's Aura satellite, whose mission is to understand the changing chemistry of the Earth's atmosphere. This remarkable satellite can measure air quality across the entire planet in just 24 hours. For more, here's P.K. Bartia, senior scientist at NASA's Earth Science Division at the Goddard Space Flight Center in Greenbelt, Maryland. Aura is the most sophisticated chemical laboratories uh, that has ever flown in space. We've been looking at the air quality issues and it has produced some very nice, interesting results in the lower atmosphere about how uh, the pollution levels are changing around the world, in the US, Europe, China, uh, and other places. We've been making measurements of several uh, gases in the lower atmosphere which involve in the air quality, the smog, and all those other issues. One of them is called nitrogen dioxide, NO2, and NO2 is very much involved in the production of ozone uh, in the, in the, in near the surface. When you hear about ozone, it actually has four very important roles in the atmosphere. So when it is in the upper atmosphere, let's say around 25 kilometers, or 16 miles or so, um, it, is, it basically absorbs the UV light that comes from the sun, which protects us against the cancer, skin cancer, for example. If you start going down to, down to around maybe 15 kilometers, about 10 miles high, uh, then the ozone becomes like a greenhouse gas, like a CO2 uh, or a methane. Uh, so it can actually warm up the atmosphere, which used to be a pretty good thing because the reason why the Earth is so warm has to do with the CO2 and methane and, and to some extent with ozone. But now, of course, the amounts have increased so much that now we're worried about heating up the atmosphere too much. And then if you go down maybe about five kilometers, then you start to see another aspect of ozone, which is very interesting, because ozone is also involved in producing something called hydroxyl radical, which is a very, very interesting chemical because it is involved in destroying all of the stuff that we put into the atmosphere, all of the pollutants we put into the atmosphere. They're all oxidized by the hydroxyl radical. And then finally, if you go down to the surface, ozone itself is a pollutant. So you, if you breathe ozone, your lungs get hurt, it can damage the plants, and, uh, and people have found that it can reduce um, the life expectancy in areas where there's a high level of ozone. In other words, good ozone is present up in the atmosphere, from 10 to 19 miles above the Earth's surface. This type of ozone helps protect us from ultraviolet rays from the sun. But there's also bad ozone, which is present at the surface of the Earth. This type of ozone, called ground-level ozone, is produced through a series of chemical reactions which involve so-called volatile organic compounds, or VOCs. VOCs are organic chemical compounds that evaporate under normal conditions of temperature and pressure. There are thousands of VOCs, including man-made sources such as gasoline fumes and natural sources such as the pine scent from pine trees. Some of these VOCs are dangerous to human health or cause harm to the environment. The ultraviolet radiation from sunlight starts chemical reactions between nitrogen oxides and VOCs. The result? Ground-level ozone. This is one of the main components of a common type of air pollution called smog, which occurs mostly in cities. Now let's find out about some of Aura's advanced instruments. One instrument is the Microwave Limb Sounder, or MLS. It measures microwave thermal emissions from the edge of the Earth's atmosphere. This allows it to measure chemicals involved in depletion of ozone in the stratosphere. One of the most important tools on board Aura is the Ozone Monitoring Instrument, or OMI. It not only measures pollutant trace gases in the troposphere, such as nitrogen dioxide and sulfur dioxide, but also ozone higher in the atmosphere. These measurements of stratospheric ozone have been essential to providing a continual record of the ozone layer and the ozone hole. But how do these instruments detect gases from space? It turns out that Aura's high-tech instruments work like really advanced digital cameras. So one of the instruments we have there, actually, I would say all of them, uh, are in some sense a very sophisticated camera. They work in different wavelength ranges. Uh, one of the instruments works in the ultraviolet, uh, which we cannot see by naked eye, uh, but it can be seen by instruments that we have. And then one looks in the microwave re region. But it's essentially the same idea. What you're trying to look at is a spectrum. Aura's instruments make a global picture of nitrogen oxides, ozone, and other gases thanks to devices called spectrometers that measure light that is absorbed by gases in the atmosphere. Spectrometers separate light and measure different wavelengths in the visible light spectrum, but also light that we can't see, including microwave, infrared, and ultraviolet light. 
Air pollutants all have a unique spectrum, which acts like a fingerprint and looks like a set of peaks and valleys on a graph. AURA's instruments identify these fingerprints and then map the distribution of each of these gases around the world. The measurements provided by AURA and other satellites help scientists monitor Earth's protective ozone layer. In 1985, scientists discovered a thinning, or hole, over Antarctica that continues to form each year around September and October. This discovery later led to a worldwide ban of ozone-depleting chemicals in the 1980s, called the Montreal Protocol. The AURA is, is one of the best instruments that, or the best spacecraft that's been built to study the, uh, the ozone depletion problem. So that was the long-term program of NASA to start, that started in 1970 and it's ongoing still. And AURA is one of the best chemical observatory to do that. The measurements provided by AURA and previous satellites help scientists monitor Earth's protective ozone layer. But what would have happened if ozone-depleting chemicals were not banned? Using advanced computer simulations, NASA scientists suggest that by 2065, nearly two-thirds of the world's ozone layer would be gone. The ultraviolet radiation falling on mid-latitude cities like Washington, D.C. would be strong enough to cause sunburn in just five minutes. DNA mutating ultraviolet radiation would be up more than five times its current levels, with harmful effects on plants and animals, including elevated rates of human skin cancer. Aura and its team of scientists continue to measure and study the ozone layer as ozone-depleting chemicals slowly decrease. If NASA's simulations are correct, we should see the ozone layer recover and the ozone hole disappear sometime between the year 2050 to 2060. Today, Aura's mission continues. The satellite is still operational and producing scientific data. NASA hopes that it will continue to measure air pollution levels for years to come. For more, here is Angie Castro-Kelly, Mission Operations Manager at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center. Yeah, we take a look at how long we can keep on operating every year, and we, we look at the data on the spacecraft, the fuel left, the condition of the instruments in the spacecraft, and just based on the fuel itself, uh, we're projecting that we could go as long as uh, 2022 or even longer.